Our homes are filled with plastics, but there's a smarter way to do things. Using hemp is the future of housing insulation, period. It's fantastic. It is all about sustainability, non-toxic materials. I think it's, it's outstanding because of the impact it can make on a large scale. I would endorse this tomorrow. I think every house being built moving forward should be using hemp insulation. Plastic, it seems, is in nearly everything, including houses. Factories like this right here make plastic pellets that find their ways into homes all over the world. These houses are primarily made of plastic, um, petroleum-based products, and it didn't used to be that way. Before World War II, houses were made of natural materials, mostly wood, stone, but pretty much everything you see here on the exterior of the home is plastic. From a health perspective, these plastic products um, contain toxins that can be released into the homes of those that live in them, and it, it, it can make people sick. Yeah, it's almost like, and I don't mean this negatively, but it's almost like every house is kind of lying a little bit. <laughs> it is. You know, I'm made of wood, but in fact, it's petroleum. That's right. This is kind of the deconstruction of a conventional, you know, current convention of building. When you look at this, from the outside it looks like wood, but it looks like it's plastic. Your vinyl siding that also kind of looks like wood. Well, there we go, it's plastic again. Here's some OSB board, which is used as sheathing, filled with adhesives, mm -hmm. plastic. Conventional studs sometimes have flame retardants in them. This is a newel post top. You know, used to be carved wood, now plastic. Plastic. We have paint Yep. with pretty color. So yellow. Wouldn't be great to have a kitchen in yellow, made of plastic. In plastic. And then we have, you know, plumbing. Yeah, sure. Plastic, vinyl. Yes, yes. Even a towel rack these days, plastic. Yeah. This is a real favorite lately, luxury vinyl tile or luxury tile, plastic, plastic. not wood at all. And this is a brick made from hemp and lime and water. And it goes into being this great building material. Wow, look That's at that. That's a great insulation and it's mold resistant. It moderates the humidity in a home and actually it's a great acoustical insulation. So the home doesn't feel tinny, it doesn't feel hollow. It feels kind of soft and quiet. So Court, I see this house behind us and it looks like there's hemp being used all throughout it. Why hemp? So traditional building materials right now, such as uh, insulation, drywall, all contain chemicals. Hemp is a very basic, simple building material that when mixed with lime can be used from everything from like a stucco exterior, the insulation inside the walls to a plaster interior finish. When you look at it, it's amazing that just two simple ingredients, hemp and lime mixed together can finish the interior and the exterior of a home. So this is hemp and lime and maybe some water? That's all that's in this? Correct, it's a, a very simple biocomposite insulation and walling material made of the woody inner woody core of the fiber industrial hemp stock and a lime-based binder. Lime is abundantly available, right? It's one of the most abundantly available resources on the planet. Uh, and again, hemp can grow anywhere. It doesn't grow well everywhere, but it absolutely can be grown anywhere. And we're certainly in an area where it does grow well. So. It is very local. And again, one of the wonderful things that Don has done here is to prove that you can revitalize a community. You can take an existing home, retrofit it with a carbon storing, carbon sequestering material that's grown right down the street. Thereby, you're essentially keeping everything in the same community. We started in this community really with the goal of just making a couple houses accessible, creating home ownership opportunities for people with disabilities, and it's really grown into this much larger community revitalization project. The whole goal was to include people with disabilities into society. I look at it from a different way. I want society to be incorporated into people with disabilities. I created Dawn Enterprise back in 2011, but I wasn't smart enough to make it work. So when we hired Court, he made it work. Everything from vacant blighted property rehabs to new home builds, community gardens, infrastructure improvements. Um, and it's, it's really has continued to take off. And I mean, it's not slowing down anytime soon. You know, it's really remarkable when you consider that we're here in the middle of the Rust Belt. But from this place, innovations like this are happening and they're changing real people's lives. What starts as a single house becomes a street, a community, the state and really the world. As designers, we think about systems and it's that kind of system thinking that has the potential to change everything.
We've come to Copenhagen, where bicycles are the center of everyday life, for health, transportation, and just for fun. So it's not surprising that one of the world's greatest bicycle design masters is from here. Hi, Martin. Hey. How many years have you been designing bicycles? I've been designing bikes for 20 some years and uh, basically trying to outcompete cars by making beautiful bikes. Yeah, and this is one of your new creations. And this is my latest step at the car industry. And I've tried to outcompete cars with uh, four different design principles. The first principle is making it durable sturdy and in this case we've used a full carbon fiber frame which was actually a first in uh, the industry and the lightest and needs to be desirable uh, like the competition and we need to make it super simple so it's easy to use you just turn it on or uh, you put up the speed turn down the speed also the fact that it needs to look distinctive you need to be able to tell it apart from other bikes it does look very distinctive the last one, which is a little bit more surprising maybe, is you need to uh, make it look integrated. So we want to make it look like one collected uh, piece of design. In this case, we've um, integrated uh, the mud guards in the frame, which is a world first. And like, like there's a host of stuff that's basically tugged away and lean uh, to make a holistic object. So do you think you can compete with cars? Definitely. Bikes are, are faster than, than cars in cities. You can hear the birds chirp. If you make an attractive design, you, know, you, you can make it more desirable than uh, a car. And, um, and in that way, you kind of um, lure people out of their cars. It's quite a lovely ride. And I know that we could go a little faster than we are at this time. <laughs> we could go a lot faster. Yeah. Kenneth, let's get down to the nuts and bolts and spokes of things. All the Biomega bikes are handmade in Denmark. I wasn't sure what to expect, but yes, it's very manual process. And I see that all the parts are very well thought out and beautifully designed, each one. All the parts for Biomega bikes are designed, developed and manufactured by Biomega. We see it as one product, not a collection of individual parts, like the frame. Yeah, it's very sculptural, it's beautiful. Feel free to pick it up. Sure, it does make for a very smooth ride. Oh, it's so light. It's, it's very light and it's very, very strong. It's made in carbon fiber and, and, and very durable. Then the motor is placed in the frame? The battery is placed inside the frame. The motor, let me show you. The engine is in the wheel. Oh, is it the front wheel? Correct, it's the front wheel. Oh, and why is it in the front wheel? One of the reasons is that it's easy to maintain. It takes only a few minutes to swap out the wheel and then you're on your way again if something happens. And I imagine that the balance has something to do with Absolutely. this as well. Absolutely, that has also something to do with it. And how is it so silent? Is it the engine? It's the motor, but it's also the rest of the bike. It's about quality. Biomega Oko is pretty fabulous in Copenhagen. But how will it do in the streets of New York City? Emmanuel, what do you think? Of course, there's room for the uh, Biomega bicycles in New York City. As a matter of fact, I had the pleasure to uh, product test those two bikes for a week, and I was totally blown away. It was amazing. It's like flying business versus flying economy. What's your criteria in choosing product for MoMA Design Store? So we ask ourselves the question, why MoMA? We look at materials, we look at innovation, we look at technology. And in this case, you know, this is loaded with all of these things. So that was kind of a, a no-brainer. We were aware of Biomega. They had a big foray in the late 90s with the Mark Newson bike. And we were really thrilled to hear that they were coming to North America. And we were able to launch it at the Moment Design Store. It's very prestigious to launch at the Moment Design Store. Thank you, Eileen. Shall we go for a ride? Let's go for it. It's incredibly smooth and silent, and it's effortless. I know. I mean, actually, I live on top of the park and ride a bike every day in the summer. And I have to tell you, you know, sometimes I get to the office and I'm drenched. 
If I had one of these bikes, I mean, it's so easy and smooth. I know I'd be totally fresh. I'm using very, very little effort. In fact, I'm going to turn on the electric motor and speed ahead of you. All right, let's see if I can catch up to you. Okay. Ciao. Design is a global language, and Biomega proves that beauty, comfort, quality, and function translates to any market. Outdoor fire pits are rarely objects of beauty, and they often produce a lot of smoke, and they're kind of a mess. The Tiki Fire Pit provides a much better and complete user experience from start to finish. It is like the Apple products of fire pits. I really liked watching the designers that work in their studio as they studied the behavior of fire. It's designed fire. Wait till you see this clever innovation. It's, it's quite special. Does the world need another fire pit? Well, it needs a better one, and one that considers the entire experience and removes the pain points. Besides smoke being the obvious one, um, <laughs> we look all the way back to the store where a consumer has to lug a giant box off a shelf, fit it in their car, uh, then you get it home, you have a, a, it's usually flat packed, you have a ton of screws and loose pieces, all the way to lighting, cleanup and storage. So there, there's a ton of them within the fire pit experience. We have a simple two-piece design. Um, assembly is meant to take less than five minutes. Uh, if you know what you're doing, less than a few minutes. All the way to lighting. Um, developed a easy light wood pack, which uh, with one match, you can get a fire going. Yeah, I wouldn't know the first thing about starting a fire. What yeah. are you, what's in your hand there? What yeah. are you holding? So, so the wood pack is actually just wood pellets, um, which are compressed sawdust that we get from uh, various manufacturing waste. Uh, and they're just compressed into these pellets. So you're basically taking them out of the waste stream then? Correct, giving them a different purpose. <laughs> so Eric, they brought you this? Yeah, this is essentially the technology within the Tiki fire pit. So this is basically the engine then on the inside? Yeah, this is the core of the product. So what's your job then? Our job was to make this a little bit more approachable for the consumer and find ways to make it a little bit more meaningful as a product. We're looking at the complete user experience. So everything from the unboxing all the way to the final burn. And what is this piece? I'm so curious. Yeah, we'll show you that later. So this is how it arrives. And so right away, the design experience begins, I see. So you already have instructions, it looks like. Receiving it and getting it out of the box, we want to make sure it was really simple all the way to the end point of once you're using it. So what is all this? Yeah, so this is what comes in the pit. Um, this is actually a cover to oh. use if it's raining or you have this in storage to make sure it's protected when you're not using the fire pit. Mm -hmm. And then this is the wood pack that Andrew just told you about that has the pellets in it. And the cone, so how does it work? Well, I'll show you. So you're just lighting the pack, just the corners? Yep. The best part is you know, like, you know it's going to work every time. As soon as you oh. have this lit. And it's supposed to last for 30 minutes? Yeah, I can come out at the end of a work day and have a 30 minute fire and just kind of unwind and relax without having to go through all the hassle of, of logs and, and kindling, splitting wood, finding wood if you don't have it. So as the pack burns away, the pellets are starting to fall out. The cone that we put the pack on, um, that's helping distribute the pellets so that you know the, the fire goes all around the inside of this, this okay. engine. With this product, we had a few challenges with prototyping. So the traditional mock-up techniques that we use, mm. we couldn't use because we had to design the fire itself. So we, we actually jumped into VR, which allowed us to walk around the product and scale it up and then also see what the fire would look like inside. Mm. Can I try? Yeah, give it a shot. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. So I see the different heights of flames that you're trying out. So why is that so important? The fire is actually the, the key focal point of the fire pit experience. So we wanted to make sure that we found ways to simulate it within a prototype. Eric, I finally understand the cone now. And it's great, it adds to the very minimal aesthetic of it. Anything else you notice about this fire? Well, I noticed we're not coughing and choking because of the smoke this time. Yeah, that's actually the core technology that uh, the entire user experience was built around. So not only you're not getting that smoke, but all the other design features that really create the entire experience of the Tiki Fire Pit. So often people think design is just about aesthetics. But as we've seen here, it's not just about the object, but it's about the entire process and all the touch points from start to finish that make something a well-designed object.